What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown. Today we're gonna extract some more firmware. This time it's gonna be over UART with a U-boot bootloader that is unlocked. And so we're going to demonstrate in that situation how we can use the utilities on the U-boot bootloader in its menu to extract certain information out of a flash file system that is on the device. So I have a device over on the desk today. Uh, what device that is is not important. I'm going to be uh, demonstrating it uh, over here on the shell. And then after we manually perform some of these tasks, I'm gonna show uh, tools, a, co a couple of Python scripts that I've thrown up on GitHub to help automate some of this for me in the future. And hopefully it can be of help to you if you are extracting things out of a U-boot bootloader. So let's hop over to my screen here. You can see I already have uh, my PicoCom command ready. This is just the most common uh, way to get a UART shell ever. It's that most standard baud rate of 115.200 and I've got my USB UART adapter plugged into the device over there, and I'm gonna hit enter, and then we're going to see that we have this shell prompt, and then if we type help into this prompt, so uh, by the way, I got into this prompt by powering on the device and holding enter while doing that, and that pauses the boot process, drops us into this U-boot, shell. How do I know it's U-boot? Well, if I run this help command, it becomes immediately obvious. If you've ever seen these set of commands, you will recognize uh, many of these commands as being U-boot. Uh, U-boot is an open source bootloader. You can go to GitHub and look at its source code. Um, keep in mind, some IoT devices will fork. They will make custom changes to U-boot to add in uh, maybe security features, maybe they'll try to password protect U-Boot um, or do something funky like that. So be aware of that. It, you might not have all the source code, but you definitely have a lot of the source code uh, to this bootloader out there. Today, um, speaking of what you can, what is in this bootloader, um, there are certain optional features that you will sometimes find included or excluded among the list of commands that are supported here. And ones that are super helpful, and I'm always really glad when I see them included, it's good for me, um, are these ext4, there's similar ext2, but ext4 is a more common uh, file system, a Linux file system. And there are these utilities that allow us to interact with the file systems on the flash shifts. These file systems are not mounted yet because this device has not yet gone through its, its full normal boot process to boot into Linux. But we can still, with these utilities, examine the file systems on the flash. And so first you're gonna need to do a little bit of recon. I've looked at my board and I've seen that I have an EMMC based flash chip on the board. So I'm gonna look through these commands here before I mess with these ext4 commands. That's gonna be our bread and butter for pulling certain files off of this firmware today. But before we look at that, we wanna understand a little bit more about the MMC uh, system that is running, the, the, the MMC flash chip. And so we're going to go ahead and we're gonna type MMC. And you can see now that there's a bunch of sub commands based off of this, uh, this main MMC command. MMC info, uh, things that just like pop out to me, like even if you, you didn't know what this, what this is, like, oh, I, an info command, I should run that and get information from, from this chip, right? Um, MMC dev is gonna be another important one and MMC list. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is MMC list because this is gonna list the available devices. And so we'll do MMC list, hit enter, and it actually lists two devices or two slots that are available. And notice that it says SD slash MMC because an EMMC chip 
logically is equivalent to an SD card. We're all familiar with SD cards and um, the systems uh, really see them as interchangeable. But we do see down here, we see this EMMC is attached to this, uh, this slot number one instead of slot number zero. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure all these systems, you, it's gonna default to selecting the first one, which is zero. And so right now, if we run, run MMC part, for example, to list the partitions, it'll say no card present. Um, same thing if we say like info, no card present. So what we need to do is we need to say MMC dev and switch it to device one. And now it says, okay, it's switched. And so now those same commands are going to give us something interesting if I can type them. So now we actually get information about this flash chip. And again, I can go and inspect the board physically, verify, okay, yeah, this is the chip that I'm seeing on the board. Um, it's uh, got 7.2 gigs of storage on it. Um, there's some other properties that I might be interested in on this system. Um, this, R this RPMB is like a section of uh, MMC or EMMC chips that's for like, uh, you, you might store like keys in there. That, that might be interesting. We're not gonna get in that, into that today. Um, but now that we have this selected, we wanna see what partitions, what the partition table looks like on this flash chip. So we're gonna say MMC part. And now that we've selected our chip, we get all of this information about the file systems that are, or excuse me, the partitions, the, the partitions that are on this flash chip. So here we can see root file system, the root FS, that's uh, definitely one of the more interesting ones that we wanna target. So, so let's target that one. So we can see that that is partition number eight. And so now all of our commands going forward, we're going to be dealing with partition eight. So it's device number one, partition eight. So that's gonna be important for uh, all these commands that we do moving forward. So now we're gonna go back to the help menu and we're gonna go back up and look at these ext4 load. That allows us to load a binary from an ext4 file system uh, and it doesn't say it explicitly here, but load it into memory. And that's gonna be interesting because then we'll have to read it out of memory when we do that. But first, there's just a nice little list files in a directory uh, command. So this ext4ls command is very interesting. Let's see what the usage for that is. We're going to specify an, in an interface. That interface is going to be the flash type. So we have an MMC flash chip. If you had like a spy flash, it'd be like SPI. Uh, NAND would be NAND. Uh, that's, uh, that's what that argument is for. And then the device, and you see device, colon, partition. So, like we said, we are in device one. We're gonna do colon, partition eight for that root file system that we discovered from that part, that partition command. And then the directory, yeah, let's just do slash. Let's look at the, the root of the root file system. And so we run that command. And we can see that it is actually reaching in to that partition and interpreting it as an ext4 file system. And it is able to read this file system, which is really cool to be able to do it inside of the bootloader with that UART access. And so you can see here that we can actually like navigate around. I'm not gonna navigate everywhere, but let's say we wanna go into like the home directory. We can see that within home, there's a root directory which is empty, so uh, we can navigate around with this ls command. Now, what if we wanna read a file? So, go back to our help. We can see that there, again, there's this ext4 load command. Let's go ahead and see what that requires. It's gonna require very similar uh, information at the start. We're gonna say mmc as the interface type, and then we're gonna say one, eight, that is our device, colon, partition. And then 
what's different here is gonna, it's gonna ask for an address. So I had to do some experimentation to figure out what a good address was. So the first thing I did was try to read it into like, you know, just zero, address zero. And this specific chip, someone in the comments might be able to tell me what this is, but certain addresses, if I tried to write or read to them, the CPU immediately resets. And I think this is some kind of a security feature that I'm trying to read and or write from some kind of protected memory region. And it's security reaction to me trying to do that is, is just, to, just to reset the chip and to start over. And so, um, I poked around and was able to find, uh, on this specific chip. So your mileage may vary. Uh, I'm going to copy something from a file that I have somewhere. This is funny. Yeah, actually I can show you. So over here, I'm going to get a sneak preview of some of some tools that I have for us. We're not we're not going to dig into these yet, but I need an address. I need a memory uh, region that I'm going to grab out of here. Okay, here we go. So we're going to read it into this address in memory. Uh, it's not going to immediately print out the file to us. It's copying it from the flash chip, which is. Uh, non-volatile storage, it, it lasts across reboots of the system, into volatile memory, which obviously does go away. If I, if I, if I were to reboot the system, that would, it would not persist in memory, right? Um, but we're going to copy it to this memory region. And then it asks for the file. Let's grab Etsy password. Okay, and it comes back and it says, okay, I've read 1,084 bytes. And again, it's read it into this memory address. So now we've, we've read from flash, we've written it into memory. Now we wanna read out the memory contents. So uBoot has these, uh, these commands that are all like, they're, they're, they're like two letter commands. So there's like MW for memory write, and then there is MD, which stands for memory display. So let's go ahead and just type in MD and learn about how this command works. So MD, it has all these little modifications that, that go like this at the end. So MD.B will read things out in bytes. Uh, .W is words, um, and then L is uh, a long, I want to say. Anyway, so di different, different, uh, different quantities of data, but we're going to go with bytes because it's going to make it really easy uh, for us. And then we need to specify the number of objects. So in this case, it's the number of bytes. So this is specified in hex. So I'm going to need to pull. I'll just pull up Python really quick, and we'll convert this to hex. Grab that value, pop it in. Okay, we are back. I screwed up in that recording and leaked a bunch of info about what this device actually is, which I don't want to do. So we're restarting the video. I have read this into memory uh, again. And this is how many bytes I need to read with that MD command that we talked about. So let's go back to MD. Now, my, the thing that I screwed up is that I didn't specify the address and it thought that this was the address I was trying to read. And like I mentioned before, it, it reset the CPU. So uh, what we wanna do is MD.B, we're gonna read bytes and then the address. So that address I needed to grab from up here from my ext4 load command, which is right here. So this is where we loaded that Etsy password file into memory. And now this is the, the size or the count of the number of bytes. Uh, so now it prints out the contents of our Etsy password file. And now, now notice it's in this hex, it's, it's in this hex dump format, right? And so, uh, but there we go, there we have it is that file. Um, so what I have done 
over here is I have created a couple tools and what they will do in this uh, firmware tools repository, I've got some other tools that I've used in the past. Um, this ext4 git file and ext4 ls file will automate these interactions that I've just kind of gone through manually in the shell. And uh, additionally, what's really nice is the git file Python script will parse this hex dump format. Get rid of this. It'll parse this hex dump format and just output the raw file and write it out to the system. So we're going to go ahead and exit PicoCom here, and we're going to show these tools in action. So again, we can kind of just really quick uh, display this ext4 ls. And so what this program does is it is going to request uh, similar information to that to that underlying command. You can see that uh, EM, MMC device and partition. So we give it that same one eight value. And then uh, it says uh, device file, really, it's like the path. So again, if I do slash, it's going to it's going to just do that ls command. And so I don't have to jump into PicoCom to, to run ls, I can just run it from that Python script. Um, that's kind of useful, but what's way more useful is this other command in here, which is the ext4 git file. So let's look at what that does. So similar, uh, similar arguments, but it has two file arguments. This is the file on the device that we want to copy, and this is the path to the local file that it's going to write the file out to. And so here we can go ext4 git file. Um, one thing I want to note is that there are a couple of assumptions uh, with these scripts, and I will show them right over here. So you may have to modify part of this script. You may have to modify it if this, uh, if your if your uh, UART adapter shows up as a different TTY device, or if your baud rate is different. If any of your UART details are different, you're going to have to come in here and modify this Python script. So just want to make that caveat. Back over here, we're going to do git file 1.8 and etsy password is the file we want. And then here, I'll just write it out to a file called p. And it's going to tell me all the commands that it's running. So it is run so we can see that full command it runs. It parses that read size and then runs that memory display command. And now, we're not going to have it in that annoying hex dump format. We have this file right here, and it just shows us uh, that that raw uh, data from the file. And so um, this is just a simple password file, nothing sensitive in here, right? Uh, if you know anything about Linux, it's actually the Etsy shadow file that stores password hashes and things like that. The Etsy password file is actually not that sensitive, unless you're on a really, really old Linux system where they used to store password hashes in the Etsy password file. So uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope this is uh, interesting or can give you another tool in your toolbox when you are looking to get firmware off a device. So anytime you're in a uh, IoT pen test, a bug bounty situation, that is the first step. That is going to give you a leg up on the competition. If you can get firmware off the device, now that black box engagement or that black box uh, bug bounty threat model becomes a lot more white box. You can get uh, code to decompile, throw in Ghidra, things like that. Um, yeah, so... Again, thank you everyone for the support for this channel. I just want to uh, yeah, shout you guys out for subscribing and commenting. And I want to shout out the Discord channel again. Please uh, see that down in the comments. And if you're interested, come join our IoT Hacker Hangout uh, Discord community. So I have nothing for you. Have a great day.